Big anime game studios are dropping their 3D character models for free on purpose. Why? Well, some speculate that this is so people can make movies, which in turn means free advertising for their game. And while that's a tempting offer, I'm going to use this opportunity to instead reverse engineer their models in Blender so I can make my own characters at home like this, which I can use for all of my own stuff. So here are the biggest secrets and techniques I've noticed from all of the 3D models I've looked at so far, so that you can steal them too. You may recognize some of these from previous videos, but this time I'll be demonstrating them on my own model as well. Let's start with one of my favorites. This is Evelyn from Zenless Zone Zero, and the way they did her topology is just peak perfection. By reverse engineering this, I'm able to create a body mesh with a full outfit, where over 90% of it is in one mesh, without any retopology needed. By lining up their clothing textures with their edges, they not only made this model giga efficient in both performance and aesthetics, but as I learned when trying it, it makes the modeling process of the outfits 10 times easier, especially for skin tight outfits like hers. So here I've got my own body mesh, and be sure to take a backup because you're going to be working with the mesh directly. I'm going to extrude an edge loop from the calf to create a pant leg. Then I'm going to merge the edge loop at the other end of the extrusion like so, so that it creates a seamless transition. And this saves so much time already by not having to create a whole new mesh for the clothing. We can also extrude for things like belts and folds in her clothing. So here I extrude a belt, and for belts you don't have to do the merging thing. Here I'm going to extrude a separation in her top clothing. And just like the pant leg, we're going to merge it like this. And already we can see the base of our outfit take form. We don't want it to be tight everywhere though, so we extrude at some loops like this to create folds. It is now also valid to cut into our topology to create more details like this belt, making sure the cuts end on corners so that the faces maintain only quads and triangles. A lot of people still misunderstand that triangles at this point in the workflow is completely fine, but that's for another video. For the edges of these clothing folds and belts, I mark them as sharp, which creates these blue lines, so that they have an edge on our principled BSDF material. The outfit is starting to take form, and the beautiful thing is, the edges are completely in line with the outfit, so we just had to play with the materials. I basically separate the entire outfit into four materials, which are all just basic BSDFs. There's this black leather material, this gold material, the base navy blue dress material, and the skin tight mesh material. In the materials tab, I can easily select any of these materials, I'll just select all the vertices of that material. And because of how the materials are separated, we can easily just select edges and use a sign to swap out the materials as we please. I can even do something like hide an entire loop like this. Then I can select one vertice here, do Control L to select all, and then I can easily swap that to a different material. The downside of this method is that you're making permanent changes to the body mesh. So either cook your entire outfit design beforehand, or be prepared to go back and reverse the changes manually. It's also kind of a pain if you're making multiple outfits for one character that are not just simple retextures, because then you'll have to go back to the base body mesh backup and make a new outfit from scratch. You don't need to do any of those though, it is faster. Now let's pivot on over to a different technique from these professional models. If you're like me, you might struggle with modeling ears. But the good news is most of these anime games just stick to a simple five version of the ear like so. It's just a simple flat object that's textured in with the details of the ear. It's a nice hack to get most of the detail with about 10% of the effort. All you'll need to do is unwrap the flat plane that the ear is on, get some basic lines down to mimic the structure of the ear, and then a few levels of shading will do the trick. Modeling the actual structure of the ear is only really needed if you're doing realistic characters. Clean mouth outline. This is another one of my favorites. By having an extra loop just before the lips close, we can have this extra crispy mouth line. No texture stretching at all, and it's just absolutely amazing when it comes to making shape keys. With textures, you'll get random distortions, but now that your mouth outline is tied to the mesh itself, it's a lot easier to tweak, and you can choose exactly where the lines go and how thick they are. If you've been playing around with outlines for your character, you'll know that for the mouth, it's not as clear cut. The inverted hull method is very inconsistent when it comes to the mouth outline, and so having this robust and reliable method to always have an outline for the mouth is a game changer. It's kind of interesting to see how different companies apply techniques in different ways. Like for example, in Zenless Zone Zero, they do the mouth outline inside instead. So that does create its own different style. Although this one does seem a little harder to pull off because you have to create extra geometry for the mouth going inwards. And then you create that 
extra loop cut for the lip lines. Zenless also does flat ears, but Jane is a rat, so they decided she was special and gave her some light extrusion. So it is still a pretty simple ear, but it does have that nice extra little detail. Now one very impressive thing about their models, they can somehow keep these nice lip contours, but not have 3 billion loops for their mouth. Sorry OC, but these are just some temporary shape keys because we got to go back and dissolve some edges here. Yeah, having it too dense on the lips is not good because when it deforms, like they get very scrunched together. But I'm not worried. With a little dissolving and edge sliding, it shouldn't be too bad. A few dissolves and tweaks, that looks a little bit more manageable, especially once we redo the shape keys. Yeah, I think that's a whole disaster averted. These pro models share a lot in common, especially how they combine 2D and 3D elements in their textures. You got some basic 3D smooth shading, and then you got the 2D elements, such as the lines and often some hard shadows. To replicate this, we've set up some principled BSDFs, which we're going to bake, and it's going to be the base for our texture. I've got my full baking process on the top left notes. I'll just go over some of the important stuff, not all of it, because a lot of people already know about it, so I may not need to. This is like my 10th retry trying to bake this um, dress material. The small cloth thing hanging off her back was creating a shadow which was getting baked into the texture, so I'm gonna move that away and give it its own light. I bake all the materials one at a time and save them all to their own separate image, and after each texture I bake, I save that one image because Blender doesn't save it automatically, and then I exit Blender, save my blend file, but I don't save the other images. I only save the one that I just baked. It's just safer that way, plus you might want to use different lighting setups for different materials. So in that case, then you can't bake them all at the same time. And more likely than not, you are not going to need a complicated material. This was just a principled BSDF plugged into the output. For anime style and the 3D texturing, simpler is better. If you overcook too much on the 3D side of things, it might lose the charm of like the art style. And from here, we just add some highlights and shading in some key areas to give it the 2D charm. I find that a nice big hard shadow in the right spots will kind of sell the 2D look that we're going for here. So I'm going to put some under the boobs. And after this is just all of the 2D texture details, mainly lines and stitches in the clothing, things like your character's designs and logos. And I find that in gacha games, this is one area where you can pack in a lot of details and whatever you like. I know there's still a lot of space on this outfit where more details can be added. For now, let's add some simple ones like some design lines in the clothing, some lines for the stitches. And we got some nice shadows and highlights in the elbow and like the thigh bands and things like that. I didn't paint those in, it's just the lighting reacting with the little bumps in the mesh. Don't worry, we'll give OC a little more time in the oven. If you're enjoying the content and or you're interested in 3D modeling, feel free to join the Discord where you can ask questions on anything related to 3D. You can even showcase your creations or check out my daily log where you might find some neat little things that I post every now and then. Because believe it or not, I am on Blender every day. See you in the next one.